In this video I will be coding the game Snake in C++, so let's get started. Let's create a new project. Call it Snake. Hit finish. Ok, we're gonna create a new source file. Like this. Ok, so we're gonna include IO stream. We're gonna include Konya.h and we're gonna include a Windows.h. We're gonna int main and return zero like this. So let's build the project so it recognizes all the libraries. And I did it, so let's close the console for now using namespace std. We're gonna use four functions for this game. We're gonna use setup first, then draw input and logic. We're going to have a global boolean variable called game over. And in the setup, we're going to set game over to false. Like this. Okay, so in the main function, we're going to call setup first. And then while the game is not over, Like this, we're gonna call draw input and logic like this. Okay, so let's draw the game board first. We're gonna draw the first line. Let's start the four cycle from i equals zero and then we need to set the parameters of the board. We're going to do them here. They're going to be constant and global. Let's do height equals 20. And width 20 as well. Like this. So the cycle is going to be from 0 up to width for the first row. And we're going to print this character here, which is going to be the character for the walls of the board. And after this, we're going to end the line. Okay, so we can copy this here. We need a semicolon here. So this prints the first row, and this prints the last row, which they are obviously identical. And in between, we're going to print the rest of the board. Well, for that, we're going to need two four cycles. The first one is going to be for i equals 0 up to height and the second one is going to be with j up to width like this just like printing a matrix we're gonna say well, we still need to print the left wall and the right wall of the board, so we're going to say if j equals 0 or j equals width minus 1. Then we're going to print this character here. For the wall, yep. Okay, else, if it's not, then we're going to print an empty space. Like this. And here, after we print a row, we need a new line. So we're going to end line here. Just like that. And, well, the while cycle prints this game infinitely many times, so we don't want that. 
So just before we print it, we want to clear the screen. Like this. Okay, so well this only works in the command prompt, so we're gonna do just that. And it's snake2. We're gonna run the command to compile the game. Let's find it here. And we have the board. Well, it blinks a lot. So, to finish the blinking, we can do a sleep function here for 40 milliseconds, for example. We can change it and the blinking gets fixed, but let's leave that aside. Now, we need to place the head of the snake and the fruit on the board. So, we're going to use XY for the positions of the head of the snake and fruit X and fruit Y for the fruit. And score okay so in the setup of the game we want the snake to appear in the middle so we're gonna say x equals width divided by 2 and y equals height divided by 2 we also want the fruit to spawn in a random position around the board so let's do random mod width here and fruit y mod height just like this okay so let's we also need to print it somewhere so let's delete this for now say if i equals y and j equals x we're gonna print the head of the snake which is gonna be a capital o and for the fruit we're gonna say if i equals fruit y and j equals fruit x we're gonna print f for the fruit just like that and if it's none of those then we're gonna print an empty space just like that okay so we can compile it again Okay, now we have the snake in the middle and then the fruit which spawns randomly here. So we want to be able to move the snake using WASD. Well, first of all, we're gonna set some enumerators called a direction. We're gonna have stop equals to zero. We're gonna have up, down, left and right. And we're gonna say e direction dir. In the setup we're gonna set direction to stop. And in the input we're gonna change the direction depending on what we press. So how can we do that? We can say if the keyboard is hit. Then we want to switch the key which is it, so switch switch the get character like this. OK. 
okay with okay and for let's start for every case case w we want the direction to be up and then break like this so let's do this for every other other keys so a s and d we're gonna have left here down and then right okay and we're gonna leave the default empty just like that so what are we going to do with those directions we're going to use them in the logic part we're going to switch the direction just like that and for case uh, up let's say we want to decrease the y y minus minus and then break we decrease it because the board is printed upside down basically so case down we want y to increase and then break just like that let's copy this so for case left And for case right, for case left we want to decrease x, and for case right we want to increase it. And let's leave the default empty. Just like that. Okay, so now we... Okay, so we can press WASD and we can move around the map, but we cannot eat the fruit, and we can go outside of the map, and then come back inside. Okay, so let's fix that. Well, for going outside of the map, we can do an if statement. Let's say if x larger, uh, smaller than zero, or it's larger than width, or y smaller than zero, or it's larger than height. Well, if any of those is the case, then it means we went out of the board, so we're gonna terminate the game. Let's say game over equals true. Okay, so how do we know if we, we have eaten the fruit? Well, if the coordinates of the fruit and the snake are the same, that means that we have eaten the fruit indeed. So let's say if x equals fruit x and if y equals fruit y, then we're going to increase the score by 10, like that. And we're going to spawn another random fruit. Let's copy this code here. Like that okay so yeah now we can eat the fruit let's try it out okay so we have eaten it well there is a score but we have not printed it yet but we're gonna do that just now so let's try to get out of the board and the game terminates perfect so where can we print the score let's say we print it after the board so here let's end line and then print score like this okay and end line because so this prints the score so now we can eat the fruit we cannot go outside of the board and we can keep track of the score the only thing left is the tail so for the tail, we're going to use two integer strings. We're going to call them tail x and tail y. And end tail for the length of the tail. So when we eat the fruit here, we also want to increase the length of the tail by one. Just like that. And in the logic part, we're going to keep track of the tail. So let's say well we want the first element of the tail to follow the head so let's say uh, tail x zero equals x 
tail y equals y. Just like that. We're going to create two more variables to keep track of those. Prev x equals tail x 0. And prev y tail y at 0. Just like that. We also need two more variables for the cycle that we're going to use. Prev 2x, prev 2y. Just like that. So let's start the cycle. We're going to run it from 1, because 0 is already there, up to the length of the tail. Just like that. And we're going to say, we're going to use pref2x and pref2y to keep track of those. The tail x and tail y. Okay, and now we need to chain to set these so they follow the previous one. So tail x at i equals prev x, and the same for y. Just like that. And now we need to update it so it's ready for the next iteration of the cycle. Prev x equals prev 2x and prev y. Prev 2y. Okay, so now this makes sure that the tail works properly. Now we need to print it somewhere. Let's say here, delete this for now. We're going to run a for cycle from k0 up to can k n tail. Minus 1, obviously. We're going to say if i is equal to that and j is equal to that, tail x at i. That means we need to print a tail segment. Let's say we choose this for the tail segment. And well, after this, we're going to need to print a space, if it's not any of those. But if we run this now, every time we increase the tail length, we need to print this at the same time as we print the space. So that would mean that the board gets distorted over time. So we basically want it so when we print this, we don't print this. So let's say print boolean print equals false like that and if we print it we're gonna change it to true and we're gonna do this if we haven't printed so if not printed then we're gonna print this just like that okay so one last thing we have to do is that if we step on our own tail, then you die. So, well, we need the four cycle, similar to that one, up to n tail. Like that. And if, well, the position of the head is the same as one of the, I mean, uh, yeah, one of the tails. like that, tail y. Okay, let's... Well, we need k here. My bad on that. Not i, obviously. So if this, then we, with two equal signs, we need to terminate the game. Like that. Okay, so let's try it again. Let's see if we get the tail. Okay, we do. And we can run around with it. Let's try to get this one. K0. 
Okay, now we have another piece of tail. And the score is down here, obviously. So we we know if we get out of the board, we die. So let's try stepping on our own tail, just like that. Yep, okay, so the game terminated. Which is what we wanted to do. So yeah, that's the whole game. Thanks for watching.